I have realised that the musician I want to be is the drummer from Coldplay. <laughs> I want to be the drummer from Coldplay so badly because that dude is rich as shit and no one knows who the fuck he is. <laughs> who the drummer from Coldplay is. He could be here and no one would know. It could be you, it could be you, it could be you. I, I'm not sure it's an Indian woman, but it could be, we don't know. <laughs> I'm obsessed with the idea that this guy has the best life in the world. And I was telling my friend about this and she tried to tell me something that she was trying to portray as a bad thing. Apparently, he loves Game of Thrones. So he said to HBO, can I be in Game of Thrones? And they were like, uh, yeah, man, you're the drummer from Coldplay. You can do literally anything you want. We'll restart The Sopranos if that's something that will make you happy, right? <laughs> now, he is in Game of Thrones. Confession time, I don't watch Game of Thrones, but even I know The Red Wedding is an important episode of Game of Thrones, right? He is in The Red Wedding. Guess what he is doing in The Red Wedding? He is the drummer in the wedding band. <laughs> That is the extent to which this guy's anonymity is a borderline superpower. He is in the most famous episode of one of the most popular television shows in the world, doing the thing he is famous for and no one noticed. <laughs> that is Kaiser Soze shit. <laughs> And my friend was telling me that she read a supposedly embarrassing story that one of the actors told. One of the actors said that when they were shooting The Red Wedding, he was making small talk with the extras, and he got round to the drummer from Coldplay and said, are you a full-time extra? <laughs> and the guy was like, no, I'm a musician. So he said, to the drummer from Coldplay, <laughs> he played on anything I might have heard of. <laughs> to which the drummer from Coldplay was presumably like, uh, have you heard of all music? <laughs> because I'm basically the drummer on all music. And my friend tried to tell me this, like this was a sad thing. She was like, oh, this guy's in Coldplay, but no one knows that he's in Coldplay. Isn't that sad? No, because the problem with being in Coldplay is that people hate Coldplay. <laughs> people hate Coldplay so much. And the people who hate Coldplay don't say things like, oh, it's not to my taste. They say things like this, I hate Coldplay! <laughs> But what you mean when you say that is, I hate Chris Martin. <laughs> no one is angry with the drummer from Coldplay. <laughs> no one has ever been like, oh, the drummer from Coldplay! <laughs> oh, my life! <laughs> and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Nish, why are you so obsessed with the drummer from Coldplay? <laughs> There's two other people in that band. We don't know anything about them either. <laughs> and you know what? You're right. There's a guitar player and a bassist in Coldplay. I wouldn't know them even if they were here. I assume it's you two, but only because they sat next to her and I spoke to her already. That's all I've got to go on. <laughs> this point. They have the exact same life as the drummer, because I did a bit of research into this. Turns out Coldplay are one of those bands where they split the royalties equally. So they have the exact same life as the drummer, apart from one detail. They have the exact same life as the drummer. They have the same level of wealth, access, and anonymity. But crucially, the drummer is sat down. <laughs> and that is the dream. <laughs>I, do just, I get concerned about the message that we send, you know, young women a lot on TV and, you know, in the media, because right now we live at the height of materialism, where it's suggested to young girls especially that you can indulge the most depraved man as long as he's rich. This is evidenced by the franchise Fifty Shades of Grey. Has everybody here seen Fifty Shades of Grey or read it? <laughs> okay, some of you are shaking your heads. Fine. I will give you a quick plot summary of Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> Uh, I will be paraphrasing in this monologue, by the way. Is everybody ready? Yeah. Here is Fifty Shades of Grey, a bridge by Dame Baptiste. Hi, I'm a pretty, naive American young girl who doesn't know about sex, even though I have access to the internet and my friend's a journalist. <laughs> Mr. Grey, you seem so mysterious and rich. Can I interview you? That's right, baby, I am mysterious, and I'm rich as hell. Can I put a pineapple in your ass? <laughs> I mean, some other 
stuff happens, but that's pretty much it. It's fair. Unfortunately, we live in a time where, you know, materialism is encouraged, you know? Do you guys remember the song, No Scrubs by TLC? Yeah, yeah great song for the ladies. Not so fun for the unemployed male. <laughs> that was not a fun song to hear when I was younger. Do <laughs> you remember how that song used to go? If you live at home with your mama, oh yes, son, I'm talking to you. <laughs> if you live at home with your mother, they're talking to you. <laughs> what if I'm a full-time carer? <laughs> I'm supposed to leave my mother lumbered with bedroom tax. <laughs> then go live with a bunch of strangers and pay somebody else's mortgage, then have those strangers question my life choices, which my mother already does, but I get rice and peas when she does it. <laughs> Sitting in the passenger side of his best friend's ride, trying to holler at me. Sitting in the passenger side of his best friend's ride, trying to holler at me. I'm sorry if me and my friends are concerned about our carbon footprint. <laughs> I'm not entitled to find love? <laughs> if you don't have a car and you're walking, oh yes, son, I'm talking to you. If you don't have a car and you're walking, they're talking to you. So we're supposed to leave our houses in four separate cars. <laughs> Knowing full well, petrol prices are at £1.25 per litre in some stations. Then if you go into London, you're paying a congestion charge four times. If you're going out of London, you're paying a toll charge four times. Then wherever we get when we're going, then you've got to pay a parking charge four times. And if we're all driving, then guess what we can't do? We can't drink, because when you all take separate cars, there's no designated driver, TLC. <laughs> Which means when we finally do get to the club because of all the traffic, because there's four cars adding to that traffic, <laughs> we've got to drink water and sparkling water, then pay club prices for fruit juice. So I'm paying £7.25 for a cranberry juice, and we've been planning this night for months, DLC! <laughs> <laughs>